In the Battle of Stars, the Warriors go to 12 and 2. This was not expected. The last real video that I made about Golden State was right after we started out 2 and 0. Oh. And, uh, yeah, a lot's happened since then. We've beaten a few teams that may or may not be quote-unquote real teams, and we've done so in pretty convincing fashion. But the two wins that I wanted to talk about today were the ones against the Chicago Bulls and the recent win against the Brooklyn Nets, because those were two games that turned out a lot differently than any of us could have ever predicted. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to take a look at those games, what we can take away from them, and why a lot of people now have the Warriors as their favorite to make the NBA finals. So let's get into the video. So real quick before we start, I know a good amount of you watching this are not subbed, so if you fall into that category, please feel free to hit that sub button, it really helps out a lot. Also be sure to leave a like, that also helps out a lot. So I wanted to start out with the win against the Chicago Bulls, because this game, I couldn't help but draw comparisons to 2016, because it reminded me of that game in January against the San Antonio Spurs, where everybody coming into that game was saying, oh yeah, they they got this crazy record, but wait until they play the Spurs. Wait until they play San Antonio, man. Yeah, this gave me a flashback to that, because this was one of the most anticipated matchups at the start of the season, with how both teams were playing. And I myself thought it would be a really good back and forth type of game. But as soon as the Warriors went on that third quarter run, it was over. Because the defense of this Warriors team is absolutely ridiculous. They forced the Chicago Bulls into 20 turnovers, with 15 of them being steals. 15 steals! That's crazy! And I'll show a few of them on screen. I mean, there's nothing really to break down. It was just suffocating defense all night, forcing people into tough shots and tough passes, especially in the third quarter. Chicago in the third quarter had 17 points on 5 for 20 shooting and had 6 turnovers, 5 of which were steals. The main factor to this game was slowing down all three Bulls stars in Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Lonzo Ball. And while they didn't really succeed in slowing down Zach Levine, I mean, at this point, it really doesn't seem like that's possible, but they still forced him into seven turnovers and took him out of some plays with their defense. And on top of that, they were able to hold DeRozan and Lonzo to five for 24 shooting combined. And this was really one of the things missing last season. Because yeah, the Warriors were an average to above average team for most of the year on defense, but they would still sometimes have trouble slowing down certain players for an entire game. There would be times where we thought we had them, and then they just had a scoring outburst in the third or fourth quarter. That does not look to be the case this year, and this was a pretty important win, whether people decide they are an actual team or not. But that's all I wanted to say about the Bulls game. Let's move on to the bigger shocker, which was the Warriors versus the Nets. He sucks. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> so, like I said, this was not expected at all. I've recently been in Twitter spaces with my guys Urkel and Shadow, and nobody in those spaces expected a blowout like this. Because while James Harden sucks at basketball all of a sudden for some weird reason, I don't know what could have possibly happened. And I already know what some of you are going to say to that, and to that, I present to you James Harden. You say to the Brooklyn Nets fans who are looking forward to a season where you guys are expected to, to have a great one. Healthy James Harden. Scary. Scary hours. But anyway, while James Harden hasn't been playing well, Kevin Durant has been on an otherworldly tear this season, as coming into this game, he was averaging 29 points on 60% shooting from the field and 70% from mid-range that is absolutely that's that's not even ridiculous i i don't even know what that is that i don't even have a word for that and so the key would have just been slowing him down and making sure james harden didn't get going and they did both of those perfectly how they did it was whoa what what is <sighs> what was that oh it's the 2016 western conference finals how do we get here okay so um wait it's the same defense that I was just about to talk about. So yes, the Warriors went back to what helped slow down KD in this series. They used a mix of zone defenses throughout the game, from 3-2 and 2-3 zones, and also a box and one at times, which was exactly what we saw them do in the series five years ago, and particularly in the fourth quarter. Except in the recent game, the Warriors did it in the third quarter, and also had Draymond as the primary defender on KD instead of Iguodala. And he would end up shooting 0 for 10 in the third quarter, and that is extremely extremely dangerous against this Warriors team, because the third quarter Warriors are back. So far this season, the Warriors are plus 124 in the third quarter, 
making them far and away the best third quarter team in the league. Second place for plus minus in the third quarter is Charlotte at plus 50. A 74 point gap between first and second. And a huge part of that is their defense, but another huge part is the other side of the ball, which of course is offense. But to be honest, it's a mix of everything. This team is top of the league in every single aspect of basketball. Don't believe me? All right, well, the Warriors this season are currently first in record, obviously. First in points, first in field goal percentage, first in rebounds, first in assists, second in steals, third in offensive rating, and first in defensive rating. They are top of the top in literally every category outside of free throw shooting. This team is amazing, and we've already seen them being able to game plan for teams pretty well, especially the big matchups like the Lakers, Clippers, Hornets, Nets, games like that, and the Bulls. I know that it's early, but I honestly can't see any team in the Western Conference beating this team four times in a seven game series. Because while I'm talking about how great the team has been playing over the first month and a half of the season, you might have forgotten. so fresh out. Yep, this guy. The Warriors are doing all of this without Clay Alexander Thompson and King James, aka James Wiseman. Our tallest player is Bielitsa, and we're leading the league in rebounding. That is scary. We are eighth in three point percentage without arguably the second greatest shooter of all time in Clay Thompson. That is scary, and we have already gotten wins against a lot of the teams that most people expected us to have problems with, without those two key pieces, in convincing, blowout fashion. That is terrifying. I have no idea what the ceiling of this team is. I think that if it does come down to it, I, which I don't think this will happen, but if they are in a position to win 70 games, I do not think they're going to go for it. I think that they're going to take the route of load management and just prepare for the playoffs, especially if they're running away with the first seed. I asked my subs on my community tab whether they think this team can win 50 games before the start of the season, and a lot of people were saying that might be too high. Well, I'm sitting here right now, November 17th, making the prediction. Between 60 and 65 games is where we are going to end up. No major injuries or health protocols. If you disagree, well, that's what the comment section is for. So with all that being said, let me know down below what you guys think about the Golden State Warriors so far this season. How many games do you think they're gonna win? And which team do you think can give them the most problems in the playoffs? Let me know what you think. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload, comment down below what you want to see next, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.